Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today, we're looking at the Behringer Eurorack 104 case and comparing it to a Moog one that's very, very similar, but not the same. Now, Behringer quite quietly released this little case. It was at the time when they were talking a lot about making Eurorack modules and bits and pieces and probably what we would have expected would be something a bit glamorous, something exciting, something that led you towards this idea that Behringer were going to take over the entire Eurorack community. But that's not what they did. They released a 104 Eurorack case which looks extremely similar to a 104 Eurorack case from Moog. Do you see that? Behringer. Moog. Can you tell them apart? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, but this video is going to be about, is this any good? Is the Behringer one any good? Is it the same as the Moog? What are the differences? And what does that mean? So starting off then, I thought it was a bit of an odd thing to do. I mean, yeah, the Moog 104 um, case is, is decent and relatively successful, but not massively successful. It's just one row and there are far more exciting cases out there to get excited about. And so it was an interesting choice for Behringer to do, plus the fact that they didn't really do anything to it. They just kind of copied it, almost. But they had an opportunity to do something quite exciting, like Arturia did with their Rack Brute thing. Something interesting and innovative and, and different. You know, maybe build in a power supply at the very least, or provide some kind of racking system to put together a whole load of them, maybe. But as it was, they just made a bit of a steel extrusion or whatever it is you call these sorts of things put some wooden ends on it and called it a rat case hmm. however the one startling thing is that it's it's about half the price of the moog and that does make it worthy of our attention i suppose because your rack's expensive everything's expensive the cases are expensive power supplies are expensive the modules are expensive and so finding a little case solution which is not going to take up you know a module's budget is is no bad thing when you're starting out just trying to make your first bit of stuff so the moog one when i bought mine i have three of these which i'll come to in a moment these were about 120 quid when i bought mine they're now roughly around about 100 pounds you can get them for the behringer one 60 quid that's quite a sizable difference. So I can almost get two of these for the price of one of the Moogs. And that sort of difference you really can't ignore. So from my point of view, I already have three. I have three of the Moog ones. I built my system, started with one of these, went to two with a rather interesting bracket that Moog produced, then went to three with the three tier bracket. Fabulous. What a great thing. So I've got this whole console thing over there, which you'll see in all of my videos. There's three tiers of 104 HP. Glorious. Fantastic. Lovely. I love the rake of it. I love the way it goes up, the way it looks, the way how it is kind of carryable about the place. And you can put it into different things. And so I've come to a position now where I've filled that up. I filled it up probably twice over. And I've got modules in drawers and on shelves and knocking around in places that are not being used. And that's a crime. So I thought, right, it's time to get some more cases. A bigger case, another case, replace the case. I don't know. I decided that I could make use of the two-tier bracket that I've got left over because I went to a three-tier one on that, if you're still with me, and maybe get a couple more Moog rows. But then I thought, but these Behringer ones, they're half the price. <laughs> you know, <laughs> For the price of two rows of Moog, I could buy a decent module or something or other. Whereas a couple of rows of the Behringer would be, you know, would more like be 120 quid. And so that seemed very attractive. And looking at the pictures, looking at the specs, I couldn't really seem to find any difference. Even looking at the screw holes on the side, they seemed to match up with the Moog ones, which meant it should fit in the bracket. Great, I thought, let's do that then. And so here I am, I've bought two of these. Two of these has not been sent to me by Behringer or anything like that. No, no, I tend to really honestly buy my own stuff, normally speaking. And so I have. I've bought two, thinking, I know, that'll sort it out, and I'm going to stick those here in a nice bracket. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to house all of my modules, and that's going to be excellent. And this has given me the opportunity to compare the two. Because people keep asking, 
they're the same, aren't they? It's just a clone, isn't it? No, not exactly. Let's have a look then. So the Behringer, it is made of it's made of metal. It does have wood ends. So in that respect, it's the same. It's sliding nuts. Yes, it's sliding nuts. Now, lots of people don't like sliding nuts. I personally, I have no experience of anything but sliding nuts, as my entire Moog system over here also has sliding nuts. Look. You see? So I go with it. I don't mind. I go with it. And sometimes it's a really useful thing. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass. But there we go. So as far as the quality of the build goes, yeah, it's just a piece of metal with some ends on and some rails with some sliding nuts. They can't go far wrong with all of that, really. Can't go far wrong. It's got some nice feet, better feet than a Moog, I would say, and sits nicely on the desk. See, little feet on the Moogs, just little feet. The metal itself is slightly shinier, I suppose. There's a duller, a duller finish on the Moog. So from a starting point, it's a decent row, it's a decent case, it's well made, it'll do the job. I've got no worries about that whatsoever. However, there is one worry, and this, this is important. Now digging around, I did actually find this information on their website and Moog's website, so I should have been a little bit more informed before I purchased this. And that is that the depth is different. The depth, the depth inside the case, this bit here. And that has a direct effect on what modules you could install. How different is it? Well, let me put these two together so I can show you. Let's try that. Do you see the boundary is on the right, the Moog on the left? Can you see the difference? Let me try it the other way around. There. Can you see the difference? So essentially, the Behringer is a half an inch shallower. 1.5 inches on this, almost 2 inches on the Moog. They say it's 1.9 on the website. Oh look, here's another way of showing the difference in size. See this gap here? That should be up there. That's the difference. That's the difference in depth that you're going to have to deal with. So when you stick a module in, the depth here is 1.5 inches or around just under 4 centimetres. Whereas on the Moog, it goes up to 2, about 5 centimetres. That's the difference. Now for lots of modules, that's not going to matter. I mean, I've got a whole row. My other one over here is stacked full of them. So something like the BCMC from Bafaco, something like the Bloom from Qubit. Nice, yeah, no bother. How about something wonderful like the Lifeforms from Pittsburgh? Yeah, great. So, yeah, 1.5 inches, that's not necessarily a big deal. A lot of stuff fits, but also a lot of stuff doesn't. So, just to, I don't know, to really overemphasize this point, I'm just going to grab a whole load of modules that I have sitting around that I was planning to put in these cases to see whether they fit and what the problem is. I mean, I do find with the Mo cases that the fit can be tight sometimes. There's a number of modules that only just fit, particularly when you've got the flying bus cables running behind. You can, of course, mount some kind of bus board inside these cases and the Behringer, but that's going to reduce your height further. So flying bus cables are probably more adaptable in this situation. But they also, you know, cause a problem. You've got to fold cables around, trying to stuff them in the right place to get them to fit properly. You know, it's tricky. But let's try out a few modules and see where we get to. Black wavetable. Yeah, the right way up to start with. See, that's completely fine. Lots of good clearance, but then it's not a deep module. So that's good. So a couple of positives first. The edge cutter. And this is not rocket science. No no bother at all. The mixer from Abstract Data. Yeah. Cool. So lots of them are fine. Maths. Let's try maths. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to show that it's not a complete disaster. Not by a long chore. A lot of modules are going to fit. Now let's try something a bit chunkier, like the Chopping Kinky from Bafaco. Now that has the power 
cable going out the top, which is a bit of a problem. Now that, within a whisker, that fits okay. Good. This one, this is a precision adder from Dopefer. Yeah, that, that's not going to fit. Yeah, you see. Woo. Yeah, you see that? No way. No way that's fitting in there. So that's a goner. Disting. See, that's a similar size. No. No for the disting. No, that's no good. That's not going to work. Now, Compass is one of my favourite new modules, and this can be quite deep because of the ribbon cable here. And actually, what happens with this one, it fits at the bottom because, you know, this is no problem here. It's at this bit. It fits at the bottom, but it doesn't fit at the top because you have this bulge here, this bend in the back, which interferes with it. I mean, if they hadn't bent that quite so much, there would be no problem. <laughs> so that's frustrating. So yeah, that's no good either. The O-Tool. See, that's pretty deep. No, that ain't fitting. So I imagine there's going to be plenty. Variegate? Oh yeah, no problem. It's just going to depend on your individual module. As I said, I already had a few space problems with the Moog. Something like the Magneto, for instance, I've got here. That is a very tight fit. There's no way that's fitting in the Behringer. 2 HP Pluck, similar. That's not going to fit. That's not going to fit in here. It's kind of this sort of depth, at least. So, yeah. So, essentially, what I'm saying is, with the, the Behringer 104 Eurac case, is that... It's just a bit shallow. It's not shallow for everything. Lots of things are going to fit. It depends on the module. So you're going to have to check the depth of the module before you get it in. 1.5 inches. That's all you've got. As opposed to 2 inches on the Moog. So I, at this stage I'm kind of half disappointed, I suppose. Or a little bit, oh, I should have looked into it that little bit deeper, perhaps. And the other half is like, oh, well, you know, most of my stuff fits. It just means I'm going to have to move them around and put the things in the right places in the right cases. Because my plan ultimately is to have two lots of this three tier side by side. At the moment, I'm going to have two tiers, but two lots of that running all my modules. And that should be fine. I'm just going to have to have the deeper ones in the Moog side and the shallow ones in the Behringer side. So one of the things that Moog provides is... A rather nice bracket. Now this is the two-tier version. As you can see, I've already got the bottom uh, Behringer case put in here. And this enables you to create this tiered arrangement, like I've got on my three tiers here, which is brilliant. I mean, if you've seen my earlier modular videos, I talked about how brilliant the mode case is, because you can get one row, and then if you're feeling that you're going to go further, you can add a second, then you can add a third, without having to replace the entire case. Brilliant. And so when I looked at the Behringer ones, I thought, well, if it's a clone of the Moog, then it should fit the bracket. And looking at the images, I thought, yeah, I think it will. I think it will fit the bracket. And was I right? Partly. I was partly right. Because it fits in a couple of places on the bracket, and a couple of places, not so much. But it's doable. If I put this in for you. So on the side here, these two screws and these two fit perfectly. The problem is, is that these bottom screws, because the case is not as deep, they don't fit into the screw holes provided for the Moog case. So ultimately what you have to do is, is get rid of that screw and then loosen this one a bit and it sort of fits in the edge a little bit. Whereas with the Moog case, all these screws fit into the right place. You do need little washers in order for the screws to not just go straight through the holes. So there you go. And as I say, you've got to somehow accommodate the flying bus cables as well. But provided you can do that,
There should be no reason why you can't get a whole load of stuff in there. Beautiful little little two-tier thing. I really do like the system. I've had no regrets in buying into the Moog idea of these 104 HP rows and then the two-tier and three-tier brackets. Brilliant. It's a great way to build up a system. And although it is quite alarming that my system is suddenly almost doubled in size, it's also awesome. Flipping awesome, I have to say. So, the Behringer case then. Is it worth it? Was it the right decision? Difficult to say. Do I wish I'd bought the Moog ones? Kinda. A little bit. Because, you know, it's kind of only money, isn't it? And I would have got something which perfectly matched my existing system and gave me the depth so that all of my modules would fit. So, yes, ultimately I should have bought the Moog. However, the price of these, 60 quid, is great. It's a great price for a case. But, of course, you've got to add a power supply to it as well, which you have to the Moog ones also. So you've still got to throw another... I don't know, 60, 70 quid at buying the tip-top audio micro Zeus here. I think what perhaps surprised me the most, not about what arrived because I, I knew what I was buying, but I'm surprised that Behringer haven't attacked the case market more aggressively. You know, if they are thinking of doing their own modules, then I expected them, or I completely expect them, to produce some kind of killer case that would be under £100, that would have power supply built in, that would be all ready to go and potentially interlocking with other ones. I mean, they have also all those Eurorack compatible synths that they've produced. And again, I'm surprised that they haven't produced something that accommodates all of those in a, in a more interesting way. I mean, they've got these and they do accommodate them. You can stick your Model D into here and a couple of extra bits of modular and off you go. And that's great. I just have expected them to go further. Maybe they will. So as I sit here feeling slightly regretful about my purchasing decision, I'm going to try my best to feel positive about it and suggest that if you do need a case, your first case, then the Behringer one, there's nothing wrong with it. It's only proviso is the depth. Got to make sure that your modules are not deeper than 1.5 inches. And there are plenty of other cases out there that are that shallow as well. So it is, it's not as if it's a desperately unusual thing Behringer have done. It's just something that you need to be aware of. So there you are, the Behringer Eurorack 104. Hope that was helpful, and in the meantime, go make some tunes.